Welcome to this demonstration of Cohesity's multi-site enterprise protection and recovery for VMware Cloud Foundation. In this demo, I'm going to showcase Cohesity's simplicity and effective procedures for protecting and recovering management and workload domains between two separate sites that are running VMware Cloud Foundation. So before I get started with the demonstration, uh, allow me to provide a logical explanation of the infrastructure we're using for this demo. So as you can see here, we have two separate data centers, two separate infrastructures, which means that we have multi vCenter infrastructure that are in play. At the data center interconnect layer, we have uh, the infrastructure connected via layer three, and we're utilizing NSX to manage the overlay between those two sites. In this particular case, everything is configured in a universal distributed logical routers, and NSX takes care of all of that to manage all the AP addressing and dealing with the routing and the infrastructure from that particular aspect. From a Cohesity standpoint, we have two separate clusters which are uh, configured to asynchronously replicate between one site or another just to protect each site in the event of a potential failure. Now we're going to move to the process of identifying the protection process, the replication process, and see how quickly we can recover either one of the environments depending on a failure based on what we're going to look at in a matter of minutes. Let's start with the demonstration. Here are a couple of other items to understand once the demonstration gets started. We have an aggregated traffic meter, which is actually uh, aggregating the traffic being sent by some of the workload VMs that we have that we will recover. Then we also have a real-time clock. This clock I'm utilizing is so that we can actually track the time in which uh, the infrastructure or the workloads are actually recovered in that, in that process. The next screen, we're looking at the uh, VMware Cloud Foundation Management Workload Domain, where actually I'm continuously pinging all of the components, including the Cohesity boxes, so that we can all see that they are actually connected. Uh, the same approach happens with the second window below, which actually is the actual second site. Same concept above is being applied below, which the secondary site is where we're actually going to fail to. Then lastly, we have the actual VCF workload domains, which are the actual VMs, which are producing all the traffic, which is being monitored on top, and what we're going to recover once we fail one of the sites. Okay, let's get started. So let me walk through the scenario what we have here. So I'm going to show you the workload domain, which we're protecting and how things are composed within site one. Here's the management stack. Uh, of site one in particular, we'll take a look at the number of nodes that are part of this particular cluster and what's being utilized for the management workload domain. So you can see here there are four nodes, which is typically uh, one of their recommended practices from VMware. Now we take a look at the vCenter server and you can obviously see that on site one, we have all the different components of that management stack. vCenter, PSC, NSX controller, login site, uh, the edge devices that have been deployed to connect the sites, as well as the actual web server workloads that we're going to protect and recover. Now, to show how we actually uh, go through the process and protect those different workloads and their different types, uh, we take a you know very simple uh, but different approach depending on how we want to uh, bring this up in the event of a failure, and also for the process of uh, protecting, as well as replicating the jobs to the different sites. So what I'll do here is that I'll uh, get on the Cohesity sort of UI and show the actual policies that have been configured in particular to the uh, web server workloads that we're going to protect because obviously right now at the moment, uh, the management stack is protected. Here you can see the protection jobs, how long it takes, every hour, retained for nine days, but also you see the replication is based on incremental copies, change block tracking, uh, do one after every job that runs, but also retain that for 90 days. So we have a retention and a replication process that is part of the same policy for that particular job, which makes everything very simple, very easy to configure and maintain. So when we look at the actual job, you'll be able to identify here the different times, the times that it takes, the duration for those different jobs. Well, that's protection jobs. We want to also take a look at the replication tasks that have been completed successfully, how long they take, uh, the duration of that process, and obviously that can change depending on the amount of data, uh, the rate change that may be applicable to the different sites. So now I'm going to flip over to site B just to basically show the same uh, availability in terms of the infrastructure. Here I want to show you the workload domain in particular, uh, I'm sorry, the management domain in particular here to site two. Same kind of process, but you'll see how, you know, the same deployment. We look at the vCenter server that's deployed here. Uh, and just to very quickly take a look at the actual 
uh, infrastructure and how things have obviously been laid out. Here you can see site two, all the components that are there, but what's actually missing from here is the uh, the actual web servers, the applications we want to protect, right? So when we come back and look at the actual Cohesity UI on the cluster for site two, you're able to see how those jobs are actually uh, uh, configured to run, how they've been running, and you can see how there's different jobs that are scheduled to to run in particular there. But as we look at uh, the different jobs, you see that they're specifically defined per uh, function. Here we look at, for example, the web server workload domain in terms of the replication and what's happening uh, onto the other site, which is you know very crucial important to what we're trying to achieve here. Now, if I look at the, uh, in terms of the, the, the job rate and all that's going on, you can obviously identify them very quickly. You can keep track. And obviously on the right side, you can see how everything is obviously still running, which have that continuous ping going. Uh, and you can see that all the entire, both sites, both infrastructures are available. They're being continuously pinged. Every component, every site, everything is there. But for the most part, we're looking at uh, some of the jobs that are actually, uh, uh, we're looking at here to see uh, actually in track what's going on. Now, very quickly, what I'll do is that I will, uh, within this particular scenario here, before I start or introduce the failure to the infrastructure, uh, which is basically we're going to disconnect uh, the data center interconnect, you know, those core switches to bring them down, you'll just see that the connectivity and the access to every one of the components, including uh, the web servers themselves, the application, the workloads themselves, as well as the actual individual components from site one should go uh, and become red. And the point is, you know, they're no longer being accessible, which in that case means they're out. Now, the, the test that we're trying to validate here is going to be based on the fact that we've, uh, we're going to simulate as if there was a complete failure, like this site is no longer coming back. And as you can see here, I've done that. And immediately you can see how everything has gone red, right? Red means it's no longer accessible. And if I go to the Cohesity box that I try to go on site one, as I refresh, you should see that not only is the, you know, the sites and all the infrastructure related components are going to become inaccessible, but very quickly as I speed up some of the interface here, you'll see that once it, caught, it catches up to the actual workload domains, all of those different applications are gone. And if you look at the aggregated uh, traffic meter that we have at the top, you see that the traffic went from being busy before to now being gone. If I refresh the vCenter server or the SDC manager interface on site one, you'll see how they will become uh, inaccessible because now we obviously, you know, kill those particular, that particular side of the infrastructure um, and it's no longer responsive. Uh, in this case, uh, this takes a little bit of time, obviously, because of the, the browser being refreshed and you can see it here. And this is simply to validate that the site is actually out. So now you can see from a management standpoint, I can no longer manage the brains of the uh, vCloud Foundation, which is in this particular case, uh, the SDC manager. If I go to uh, the vCenter server, the same thing applies. And if you were to try and test every single component of the management stack, you would expect the exact same results. Now, this is also applicable to the Cohesity cluster because this is not per se introducing a single node failure as I've done in previous demos just to simply validate and showcase the strict consistency application that we have for data resiliency and availability. This is basically the entire cluster is out. So now we're looking at uh, relying on the fact that the information that was replicated as part of that job uh, onto site two is what's going to be accessible and available to us um, whenever we want to recover the site, right? So that obviously it's, uh, you know, you have there's a time in terms of the re recovery point in time objectives that you can actually uh, be able to adhere to and, and have available, uh, depending on you know, the last replicated job, which we configured it to be in an hour. So here, for example, we're gonna start the process of failing over. And because site two has a, a management stack to survive, we're going to recover the workloads, right? And notice that I, here we have the ability to connect to that specific vCenter server on site two to start the process of recovery. Now, you can see how simple this is. This, this could be performed and instantiated through APIs as, as I've demonstrated before. But the point here is that we're able to actually choose the actual resources where we're gonna go. 
as you can see here, we're choosing the specific cluster, whether it be uh, whether it be um, uh, we want to start the sort of uh, uh, restore to happen. We're going to select the specific um, items within the network that we want to do. We want to choose a specific network segment uh, for the applications that we're going to bring back. Remember, we have uh, NSX running and controlling that. We're able to see the different snapshots, the different point in times where we can recover from. And we're obviously going to choose on the latest one. Right? We select the latest one. We hit finish. And now you should be able to track from the clock up here how long it's going to take for this recovery to take place on the other site. And we're going to validate that by simply uh, bringing back up those web server workloads that were uh, being now instantiated on site two. Remember, these server workloads were not running or were not stored on any of the, the, the nodes that were on site two, and therefore they were not stored on the vSAN data store for that particular site. So this is not a replication function as we traditionally use for availability scenarios where you utilize products like SRN, vSAN replication, and Zerto. We're talking about reinstantiating from scratch, bringing back up on the Cohesity cluster those uh, web server, those, those workload virtual machines that are going to come back up from scratch. And as you can see here, within a few seconds, uh, we have one of those virtual machines coming back up. Uh, you can see that the traffic of that one web server has already started by looking at the top uh, in the aggregated uh, traffic meter. And actually, you know, within a minute now, we have you know, quite a bit of traffic going on. So the point is to bring back uh, the applications as fast as we can. And within the UI on site two here, you can now see that we have so far uh, six, uh, four of those web servers up and running. Now remember that this is partly uh, we're recovering the application in the sense of the virtual machine, but the application within itself falls under what's categorized as application availability. So as soon as and as fast as the services for those applications come up, we can actually begin to register them and bring them back online. We can now actually determine the, the SLAs or the RTOs and RPOs uh, specifically when it comes to bringing up the virtual machines. Uh, as you can see here, we continue to do that. Now, one thing that's different here is that we could have very easily performed this procedure in this process and restore the entire management stack from site one. The thing is that we don't need to do that if we're going to maintain two separate sites with sort of uh, uh, which maintain their own management stack. All we need here is because we have these sites connected and NSX is providing the overlay and managing the, the, the routing and all the networking stuff through the universal connection, we can actually bypass that because there's no need for that. The focus here is now, because we have a management, a surviving management stack that's gonna get us back to business the way it is, all the IP addresses remain the same, all the infrastructure services and components uh, are from a management perspective are still available from network and, and all those different components. All we need to focus on is bring back all the actual applications that we're running on site one to run on site two as fast as we possibly can. This happens through an asynchronous replication procedure at the lower level of the infrastructure, which is applicable to the Cohesity cluster. Now, if you have a need for applications to be synchronously replicated, you can still leverage those products, those integrations, those investments you've already made, such as Zerto, SRM and all those solutions that deliver those capabilities. The thing here is that Cohesity provides native replication at a platform level, but is asynchronously done. Right? So we're not able to satisfy that synchronous replication requirement that you may have on a particular application. The beauty here is this. It's not one or the other, but you can have both depending on the requirements of the infrastructure. But if you take a look at what's happening here within very few number of minutes, uh, we're able to bring back nearly the entire number of uh, 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 web servers or the applications that are running, uh, that were running on site one onto site two. Uh, and in very few cases in my experience, have we been able to perform either DR tests, recovery, actual recoveries in such short amount of time, such as what you see here, right? Obviously, uh, some things to take into consideration is, well, we can actually bring back everything up in this particular fashion very quickly within four minutes and we're up and running. Um, uh, some, things, some other things to consider is the fact that, you know, depending on the, on the ratio of data growth and how things are replicated on the other side and whether or not uh, you do this effectively can actually change or determine, you know, the, 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 the point of recovery and the point in time that you may have for a specific amount of data. 
Uh, being the fact that Cohesity utilizes uh, CBT for replication, not only is the replication done based on that particular model, but you know, when it comes to being able to efficiently transfer information, we obviously do things where we provide space efficiency features like dedupant compression, so that whenever you're transferring things over the wire, they're effectively done, so you don't have to actually uh, take longer periods of time to uh, allow the replication to be completed as part of the protection jobs. So this is something that's particularly very, very uh, important. It's game changing. It allows you to add availability as well as another layer of recoverability for your infrastructure that can get you through many, many different failure or testing scenarios. I hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.